Hey there and welcome to the second episode of Letter In Live. Woo Theme tune still pending. This is the exciting comic book lettering series in which I will letter a page of comics live while narrating the process in a stream of consciousness in the hope that you will pick up a little bit of info along the way. So without much further ado, let's dive... Oh my God. And there you go. Amazing what crap you can create with Canva. At least we've got a, an intro sequence to this now. Okay, now the page we're going to be lettering today is this page right here. It is page number four from Black Falcon 2 from Madhouse Comics, written by Max Hauser with art by JC Grand. The uh, reason I've chosen this page is because the, uh, the writer specifically asked for a, a Silver Age nuance about it. And you can obviously see that's reflected in the art that's super cool. So I've had, a, I've had great fun uh, lettering a few of the pages, trying to bring the aesthetic into it. Um, we've got sort of like a, a splash page here, uh, which is sort of styled out as they would old school stuff. And sort of going through the, um, uh, having, doing an investigation into like a few comic book lettering from the, back in the day. A lot of them use these really weird looking sort of speech bubbles. I mean, some of them are, Sort of like all over the shot really um that's just sort of like a, a crazy shape and they're all hand drawn and i'm not doing hand drawn because a the trusty tablet's not plugged in and b i'm a digital artist but we'll save hand drawn for another tutorial at some other point but you can just sort of see the sort of weird shapes that are going on so i've basically been trying to reflect that in the in the actual sort of look of the lettering as well which is uh which is it's fun to do it makes a nice change it's a bit different from the usual stuff so i'm enjoying that so i wanted to do uh, a bit of lettering for page four it's got a few sound effects which i thought would be nice and it's not got that much text so here i've got the script in front of me and as you can see we've got one two uh three four lines of speech and two sound effects. Now I've already copied uh, the speech straight in. Uh, just wanted to sort of look at the sound effects really. Uh, we've got a wham and a biff and uh, we've got a double exclamation mark on the ends. Now there's an argument that sound effects shouldn't have any form of exclamation at all because it's exclamation is a speech mark. So uh, I think what I'm actually gonna do is add a little look into um, some previous efforts from back in the day and some use uh, speech marks some some don't so I'm just gonna uh, take the halfway point to be honest and I'm just gonna have one exclamation mark because I, I'm kind of against the exclamation marks for like a biff it doesn't sound like it needs to be exclaimed but uh, the writers put it in um, and I accept that for me, but I won't accept two exclamation marks because that's just not proper English. It doesn't exist. So we're going to go for that. Uh, the next step that we would need to do would be to just give it a quick look over for crossbar eyes. As you can see, we got one in our biff there. And uh, we've got one here in our time. And another one over here. They do get around these sneaky crossbar eyes. So you just got to keep your eye out for them. Uh, looking at the uh, text as well, we've got a couple of highlights. We've got Ramiro, which is the mad scientist's name. So I'm just going to bold that out. Always make sure you get the full stop when you're doing a bolding. That's just how it goes. Uh, we've also got mentioned that this get him, it's the writer's highlighted that. So we want to make a point of making that special. Um, and it's highlighted time as well because it's a... It's a gag about a time machine, so uh, that needs to be uh, have some special effect to it as well. And ah, ha 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 ha, um, stuff like that, like a hum and, and a and a, uh, they're always best off italic. So we're going to stick with that, and um, I'm going to apply some better effects to the to the get him in the time. I think because it more suits the silver age sort of style. But I'm just sort of uh, setting them so I know what I'm doing. Now, looking at the script, so panel one, Black Falcon, which is our hero here, 
He says you'll never get away with this, Romero. You dastardly devil. Excellent. And uh, placement-wise for this, I mean, we could stick it there because it's a nice space, but it's kind of in the way. You're affecting the, the visuals. There's, there's tension going on here. So we want to put that probably up there or up there. So I'm just going to drop it there for now. Uh, panel two, get that feathered in convenience game. It's perfect space for it up there. And we've got our wham, which is quite exciting. It's going to fit in around here somewhere. We've got our biff, which is going to go on over here. Then we've got another bit of text here. which I'll try and fit up there if possible. It looks like a good spot for it, but it could go over here. And then... Final bit of text is going to go around there somewhere. So we've got a rough idea of placements. We've got a, a rough idea of what we're going to do with it. So uh, first up, we'll concentrate on this line here. All right. In order to get a bit of visual on the letter, and we just, I'm just going to uh, knock the opacity down on the art, just so we get a bit of a clearer view of where our lettering is going. Because I'm feeling it's going to go up here in this sort of dead space, and. Uh, I've kind of looked out a little bit with uh, with the uh, Silver Age aesthetics because they just ram anything up the corner and they've got all these really clanky looking uh, speech bubbles. So um, I'm kind of happy with it as it is right there. One thing I might do is, if we zoom in, we'll uh, give never an emphasis as well because it just sounds right. It's something... A word spoken with force. It's always good to uh, uh, give that a bold. I'm feeling... Uh, I'm just going to try and manipulate the, the text a little. I don't want to intrude down on Falcon's head here. So... Uh, there's the potential of going for that. I think, you know what, I'm just going to stick with that. I think it will go quite nicely. It's about a letter's width from the top. Just going to nudge it up a teeny bit. We're actually going to move that into the side there. Now with the the stuff I've been doing previously, you can see it's just it's basically a collection of shapes mangled together, and it works quite nice. It's quite an effective way. So um, what I'm going to do is just going to draw out some ellipses. There we go, and I'll have this being white for now. Obviously, uh, your standard shaped ellipse is uh, is the work of the devil. So I lock the text, and I'm just going to sort of squish this to make it a bit more sort of of a nicer shape. And I'm going to create these lumps that sort of stick out from in this style of lettering so i'll just pop that in there and stretch that one out a bit and i'm gonna squash that in a bit just to give it a bit more of an old schooly feel um, i know for a fact that uh, i'm gonna butt this so i'm just gonna cover that up really and what i can do now is merge these four shapes together uh, using option and unite and we've got ourselves a shape to looking pretty good now um obviously i'm going to add in a tail and it can come from here and it doesn't need to go far so i'm just going to drop a quick tail in there like that that should do the trick and i want to pop that tail into the folder that I've just created for all those shapes. And we need a stroke as well, obviously. Now, stroke for this is going to be, uh, we've got ourselves a brush. Obviously, it's a little bit too big. I want uh, half point weight, and I'm going to use the just turn this down slightly to make it a little bit thinner and we've got sort of <coughs> got sort of got ourselves a, a, 
like a nice looking old school hand drawn effect to the stroke there so that looks pretty cool now what i need to do is mask the rest of it so i'm just going to grab myself a rectangle tool and we've got our lines here so we know what we want now our mask needs to contain needs to, needs to be over the part that we want to show so we're going to lose this bit out here and it's going to show everything that's behind this square so with that rectangle and that group selected i'm just going to hit command and seven and as you can see we've got ourselves a nice bubble already formed i can just go in and tweak this slightly so you can see there's a gap there which we don't want so i'm just going to zoom in and sort of nudge that up so it covers any white additional marks i can nudge that up as well just a smidge there you go and that looks pretty cool that uh, looks authentic i'll just turn the opacity back up and there you go there's our first bubble looking pretty wicked and it doesn't interfere uh, with the action that's going on in the panel so moving on to the next one we've got to get that Feathered Inconvenience, get him. Now I'm going to split this. Like just drop the opacity down in the art again. Lock that. I'm going to split this. Because that get him feels like it needs a bit of a special treatment. So I'm just going to move it into its own text box. And that's going to work like that. You can do is make sure it matches up. Yep, that looks good. And the gittins are going to go here, but I'm, I'm going to use a different font for this. And so I'm going into my Blambot repertoire. And uh, what you can do is select, go through the various fonts and see what will actually work for this. Uh, that's quite a nice one. What else have we got? That's pretty good. Fun dead. It's sort of like villainous. And there's a potential one. And what I kind of do generally is sort of make a little collection of fonts. Sort of see which one uh, I would like. It's a bit too angry, a bit too comic -y. That's quite fun. We want a font that sort of reflects the speech of the bad guy uh, and the fact that he is a villain. And then uh, we want something that looks good as well and suits the actual words that are being said. So I actually, I think I'm going to go with this one. Fun Dead looks pretty cool. And I'm just going to increase the size of that. And then we've ended up with a nice sort of bubbly shape thing. So I'm Happy with that. Just gonna uh, align these together, and then we're gonna start building out our bubbles again. Now, rather than sort of making new ones, I'm just gonna nick the ones I used before and sort of re-manipulate them. And I'm gonna grab that one as well. And then I'm going to sort of mash these together. Just turn them into a color that we can see temporarily. So we've got sort of a bulge coming out here for the inconvenience and then a lower bulge for this as well. And what I can do to make it even more hand-drawn effect is sort of manipulate the anchor points. Sort of make it look a bit wonky which is nice it's just to emphasize the, the hand drawnness of it all because these are perfect ovals and you can kind of tell that just all makes it feel a little bit more natural just 
twist it slightly. Just to, so there's various ways you can get a wonky effect. You can twist, you can mess with the handles. Uh, whatever looks good. And again, we're just going to sort of merge those three together into a single uh, group. Because they're all in there. And then I'm just going to grab the eyedropper tool and just click on that. And what it'll do is it'll convert these uh, to white with a black stroke. I still need to go in and mess about with the brush and drop down the size slightly. And uh, that's looking pretty good. I want a tail for this as well. Just make sure I'm not covering anything useful in the background. I might just bring these across just a smidge. And tail. We're going to go for on here with a curve like so just going to rotate that so it points uh, more directly at his mouth there you go I'm not a fan of sort of lines connecting like that so now I'm going to grab that bit of text drop it in the folder with them it should join the group and have the stroke applied to him and again we're going to go with our mask just draw out a square because we've got these nice lines. Select that, Command 7, and pop that back in there. And boom, we've got our second uh, funky looking uh, speech. That's pretty good. Now, onto the sound effects. So, for this first sound effect, um, we've got a wham. Lovely. So, uh, I'm just going to increase the size so I can see it a bit better. And um, we're going to choose a font and uh, something that I think will work for this. We've got a uh, blowhole, which is sort of like quite a hand-drawn sort of effect to it, which I do like. And obviously, as all the lettering was hand-drawn back in the day, that sort of makes sense. So that looks quite a nice wham effect. Uh, what I'm going to do is just convert that. Uh, to uh, outlines with it selected which turns it into the shape that I want and I feel like there's going to be some sort of twist on it there and we can also throw it in an effect as well maybe an arc lower to sort of give it a little bit more uh, interestingness about it now with that effect applied what to uh, I need to go to uh, object and expand appearance just to sort of turn that effect into a solid thing and I'm going to also as well go to object and ungroup so all of these items are now separate so I can get in and manipulate them on their own what we can do is we can tweak a few of these and Sort of have a, a bit of fluidity to the wham sort of make it a bit more dynamic and let's go for it with the exclamation mark and make it a little bit bigger so that's the beginning of wow of a wham and as you can see sort of this character's foreground i appreciate he's getting smacked backwards so the punch happened there but the wham sort of needs to sort of be at the forefront as well so uh, we, but we don't want to cover up too much of the artwork so this is just sort of deadish space we can use here so with the sound effect selected what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to object uh, path and offset path and what it will do it will add a stroke around it and that feels quite nice it feels sort of like a big thick pen mark you can see going around it which looks pretty cool and I'm just going to uh, add, no, yeah, no, I'm going to stick with, stick with how it was, I quite like that, and <clears throat> what I'm going to do is go in and grab all of these, and turn these white, that looks pretty nice, now you can see, um, 
there's a little bit of overlap going here uh, that M is on top of that A that H is on top of that W and if we look at old school lettering so you can see the sort of fan sound effects that they're, they're written because they were hand drawn out themselves they're sort of the, the artist is going to draw the B first so the T naturally comes underneath it it's uh, just the way that uh, you do it when you, you hand draw it so we need to simulate that really what I'm going to do grab hold of my W there just drag it up to that one grab hold of the H drag it up to there grab hold of the A just sort of ordering them in the layers so they appear layered on top of each other and to emphasize the whole effect we're going to start moving moving these parts around so you can see that they're definitely hand drawn on top of each other like so that let's increase it a bit turn it a bit more so it looks like that and obviously we've shortened it up a bit so what I'm going to do is just expand it some more turn it again so it sort of feels in line with the punch that's been thrown and uh, we've got ourselves a wham Okay, that looks pretty cool. <clears throat> okay, moving on to the Biff. Obviously, it's a classic punching noise. I'm just going to make that a little bigger. And then choose a font that will suit. Again, I'm trying to keep to the style of uh, the olden days. So, I think I'm going to go for Palooka, which is a nice font. It's sort of going to go in around here. I'll just increase the size of that a little bit and we're going to apply an effect to it I'm just going to go with an arc like so you can mess around with the, how arky you want it it starts to deform the letters slightly and that's quite cool you can use just these as well should you wish to Having it slightly bigger at the start looks quite nice. Okay, and then applying that style, so object expand appearance, and we're going to turn it a little as well. So again, sort of in line with the where the punch is coming from. That's quite all right for now. I'm I'm uh, obviously working in black and white here, and the colours going to remain black and white. So uh, ideally. We want to be able to make sure the lettering stands out. I've already used that sort of effect there. So I'm going to wait until I've turned the color back on and we'll come back to that one. I just want to sort of get these finished and completed and out of the way. So uh, for this, obviously it's quite a bit of text. We can try and squash it in there like that. But it's sort of intruding on his face a little. And obviously he's looking that way as well so it's quite possibly I can just have it down here and it's pretty strange doing this uh, silver age stuff because it just <laughs> kind of don't need to make a nice shaped word balloon with this because they're just all wonky and all over the place so um, that's all right he's making quicker work of those buffoons than I thought no matter so anything need bold in there you think um buffoons could potentially be given a bold possibly quicker work but i think i'll just stick with that for now okay and if i go and grab this from up here copy that Come down, paste it, click on the mask, delete that, and bring this back into play, and ungroup those, sort of 
put them to work where I want them to be. Object uh, compound path. I can just <coughs> grab all of these, move them out of that group, and I'll separate them to more manageable things. Uh, one there. that and we don't want that too thick so it's nice to have a little bulge sort of sticking out That's two in your face I'm just going to drag that in move the handles a little move that one down across a touch as long as it doesn't have to be exact and can be as wonky as you need it to be with this it's quite a lovely way to work I'm converted okay uh, yeah that kind of looks all right I'm just gonna delete that tail select those layers again merge them all together go and find our style from this one there we go looking like that can we move it up there potentially nope in his face again yeah there's too much <coughs> face one is one is expression it's obviously an important part of this so we want to see his expression and no time for a tail I think I'm gonna go in from under into there. That's that. It looks pretty cool. Pop that in with the rest of them. We need to make sure we've got our correct stroke applied. Turn the weight down. And a lovely hand-drawn aesthetic to it there as well. That's looking pretty good. Onto the final panel. And Again, I'm going to do the same treatment for time as we've done with uh, the other, the get him that we used earlier. I think it just needs a bit, because it's such a, a good pun, uh, it needs its own font. So I'm going to go for, as it's a joke, we could use something humorous like that. We can't use anything techy because it's an old school comic. Possibly trash cinema. It's a pretty trashy joke. Tidy that up a bit. Pop that up there. Kind of works. We don't want to get in the way of this exciting imagery that's going on, so we're just going to move it across, which works just fine. And we're going to get through this process again. So I'm just going to grab hold of that, take advantage. No point, keep repeatedly making balloons over and over and over again. Uh, just makes life simpler to reuse something that we've done before. Don't want the tail. We'll put that up here. Big sausage goes there. All right. What we can do is just just to make it a bit more fun. We can put like a, a couple of bulges into there. Just 
just so it feels like someone's actually drawn these lines around like that. We'll grab all of those. And we're going to merge them together. And grab hold of the style for these. Okay, by the looks of it, I've grouped them and not united them, which is what I wanted to do. Hold down the option, unite them all, and we've got sort of like a shape there. carry on sort of tweaking it and manipulating it so you get something that you're happy with I think I'm just really going to move that sort of down there in fact I'm going to move it across just so I can make sure now the tail's actually coming in from over here like that because the guy's zooming off the page, we can have a long tail on this. Sort of amplifies the effect that he's moving away from the speech, really. He's moving at speed and at pace. Um, just drop that into that folder. Actually, I think I'm just going to decrease the size of that slightly. And we can raise that up. The ah ha 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 can do with a bit of work to it as well, just to make it a bit more interesting. So I'm going to object type create our lines object uh, on group. All our letters are now separately separate, so I can have a bit of fun with this now sort of make it feel a bit more interesting yeah, it just sort of adds a bit of cheekiness to the character adds a bit of insanity that they're sort of going ah ha ha which always looks good So I can grab all of these. I'll make them a little, a little bigger, and that nice lump sort of suits it now. So uh, that's quite fun. Okay, cool. So next up is creating of the mask draw myself uh, select that option nope command and seven and drop that into there so we've got our effect there a bit of a, an annoying intrusion there as the art has come outside of the lines but i'll deal with that in the moment and uh, let's turn the opacity back up on the page so we can see the whole thing with all the lettering in place. I'm just going to do a, a quick swoop, sweep now uh, just to check for issues. Obviously there's um, that space there which I did right at the start which is super annoying. I'm just going to drop that there. That looks good. No crossbar. Eyes. Biff as you can see yeah, it needs some work and I feel there's a bit too much breathing space on this so I'm gonna just bring it in slightly okay that looks good Uh, in order to fix this problem here, I'm just going to take advantage of this and I'm going to colour it the same colour as 
natural line so that solves that problem that looks good uh, over to the biff so with the biff I think I'm going to do the same uh, add a stroke to it so uh, my biff selected I'm going to go object path offset path and we'll have a slightly smaller stroke to this one okay and then we'll change these to white the gray could possibly get away with that get rid of white for now and we want to make sure we've got all our letters in the correct order so we're going to grab our b's go through this process again grab the i's First F, next F. Okay, that looks good. So now I can grab this B and we can have it sort of overlapping a bit. Grab this F, bring it underneath. That F can go there. Exclamation mark. Get rid of that separate. I don't think that would hurt. Yep, and that's looking pretty hand drawn. And there we go. We've got ourselves a lettered page uh, using a few funky techniques. Let's make sure all this is behaving. Match it up. nicely with that and any other possible gripe is that U is a bit close but I'll be honest they don't seem to care much in old school comics but what I can do is just come in and grab that just sort of extend that out a bit just to give it a bit more breathing tail on that is a little small that join there doesn't really match the joins of the other tails so I'm going to make that a little bit bigger just by simply sliding that down like that give it a little turn more pointing towards his mouth And there we have it, one lettered page. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you uh, learned something interesting there. And uh, join me again for another lettering live.